Step one, we're gonna put the lag master onto one of our golf clubs. I prefer to use a short iron, so nine, eight, or seven. Um, you can use a wedge as well. I'm gonna use my eight iron. Again, the goal of using a lag master is to train how the body and the arms need to swing. We don't need to hit golf balls to be able to do that. We actually want you to make slow, methodical practice swings to train the body in the proper motions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo the tightening knob so I can fit the lag master over the shaft. We're gonna slide it down till it's on the end of the club. If you're a right-handed golfer, it's going to be tilted about 30 degrees to the right. If you're lefty, it's gonna be tilted 30 degrees to the left. Typically, how I check that is I like to see the lag master on the same angle as the top edge of the club. So I'm gonna tighten this down. And again, you don't have to worry about it being too tight. There's no such thing. So I got it nice and snug. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go through and we're gonna make sure the height of the lag master is set accordingly and properly for you. All right, step two, we're gonna determine the proper height for you. Now, what I always recommend is if you have a Sharpie that you can mark when you get it to the proper height. So when you go and take it back down, it's always gonna be able to be marked and you can go through and go back to that same position. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna start by loosening this top knob just slightly so that the upper tube has just a little bit of slack. I don't want it to fall out though. I wanna be able to hold it upside down so it doesn't fall, but I can kind of still tug on it. And what's gonna happen is I'm gonna go up to the top of my swing and I wanna see how much space is available between the ball and my shoulder. If my arms are higher, you can see there's a lot of space here. So I need to extend this a lot more out and then I can tighten it, go back down into my setup and go back up to the top and make sure that it's in the proper position. All right, step three. We've got our lag master height set. Again, I have mine set to the lowest length. And now we're gonna start going and doing some back swings. And what we're gonna do is, again, we wanna make sure these practice swings are really slow and steady to really start to train how we need to move. Again, the number one thing we wanna to try to walk away with is, we understand that there's mechanics that are changing, but we're trying to create a feel. Mechanics create feel, feel reproduces mechanics. Okay, we want to try to recreate, create some kind of feel so I can take it to the golf course. That's what I'm gonna leave with from the driving range. I don't wanna be thinking about all of the stuff I'm trying to do. We're trying to simplify it. So what's gonna happen is again, I'm gonna take my grip and take my address. And when I go back into my backswing, if I take it back in correctly, you notice really quick, if I take it too flat, it goes into my bicep. If I go too high, too steep, it almost looks like it's gonna go into my ear. Again, this is going to help prompt you to keep the club on a better plane. All right, so to make sure that I make a good on-plane golf swing, when I come back, this is going to touch your trail shoulder, okay? One key that we wanna make sure that when we do this is most players, when I see them struggle, they don't make a full shoulder turn. So really quickly, if we take our club up across our shoulders, and I rotate, I want that grip to be able to turn almost down to the golf ball. So again, my shoulders, we want our shoulders to turn and rotate about 90 degrees. To do that, sometimes my hips need to make sure that they rotate as well. So if you go up and you just do this, you can see my shoulders here did not rotate a 45 degree angle. So we're gonna go all the way up to the top. Again, you can feel where it's on the top, it's touching my shoulder. The next step is trying to keep it on the shoulder in the downswing. All right, step four, this is the downswing. Again, we're making sure that our shoulders are turning full 90 degrees. The lag master is touching my trail shoulder. And step four, I'm trying to keep it on that shoulder for about halfway down. I don't need it to be any more than this. Again, people are trying to do too much lag. They get too long. And when you come in here, now the club face is wide open. There's no way I can square that up. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna go up to the top and I'm gonna try to keep it on for about halfway down and I want to release the club down into impact. And again, I always wanna make sure that that club face is nice and square when I get into impact. And from here, we're gonna go into a nice follow through. In a follow through, I always like to make sure that the toe of the club is toe up 
making sure that that ball is gonna go straight. The ball likes to go wherever the toe is pointing. And from here, we're going to start to recock our wrist and let it come back up into touch our other shoulder. So real quick, again, we're gonna go through all steps. You got takeaway up into the top, good shoulder turn, the start down, keeping the uh, lag master on the shoulder, the release into impact, out into the follow through, and up to our classic golf finish with the lag master on the other shoulder.